Osiris. Welcome to another episode of Goose Chicks Podcast, an all-woman show, women-led show focused on the band Goose and the community that supports them. I'm Leslie Mack, producer and co-host. Today, we are going to talk with some LGBTQIA plus fans of Goose about their experiences with the band and the community. It's going to be a really great conversation. But as always, first, let's uh, check in with everyone. First of all, uh, our folks kept run ready. I mean, we are... Uh, you know, everyone's going to be listening to this the day of the cap run, but we're recording this the Friday before. Hannah, you're shaking your head. No, you're not ready. What? No, no, I'm not even a little bit ready. Um, but the biggest thing is like, I was always raised. You don't leave your house for, uh, you know, a vacation or whatever without it being clean. Y'all, I got to do some cleaning. Um, <laughs> but the plans for the cap are starting to come together. So in that sense, I feel really good and really ready. And uh, me and uh, Kelsey from Jive Lee Designs, um, we got big friendship plans. So I'm Ooh, gonna go. I love it. I love it. Uh, Chelsea, how about you? How are you feeling? Ready for the cap? My thing about you is like, you decided to go, you have you, this is a quick plan for you. It was like, you decided and it's here. So how are you doing? Yeah. It feels a little whiplashy sometimes. Uh, yeah, definitely came up really <laughs> fast because I was not intending to go until like a couple of weeks ago. So uh feels like it's coming up fast, but I'm really excited to um, hopefully see all five nights. I still need a couple nights of tickets and um, be with all of you, but uh, Let I've never been know. to New York either. So. <laughs> Yeah, Let everyone a, know which nights you need. So can, they'll hear it on Wednesday. And then, well, you know, we can Yeah, I need things. Wednesday. Um, okay. I'll be flying in like that afternoon. So hopefully I could make it to the show. Wednesday and Friday, I'm still looking for I need Friday, Saturday. Friday, Saturday. Okay, that's those are the tickets that we're looking for. Got it. So if um, anyone like, has tickets, yeah. Yeah, let, let us know. Hit us up. You can literally just tag us, literally, on any social media platform. We will <laughs> Alexis, you ready? How 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 are how are you you prepping? You ready to go? Oh girl. Oh, oh, I am so ready. I am so excited. Like Goose Drought will be coming to an end. We will finally get to see everyone, happy faces, you know, bring filling our cup, you know, with harmony. It's gonna be wonderful. And um I just got a package before we started recording and the most beautiful lens, like a new lens came in. So I am just beyond excited to use this baby up there. I mean, what a better place to bring it out and bring out this new lens at the Capitol and, you know, just such a, such an awesome place. So I am obviously, I'm just like beyond excited. I'm like, whoop, 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 whoop. No, I don't know if I'll no, have the right clothes. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's secondary. Clothes, clothes, you know, you'll put something that'll be fine. Um, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of ready. I have, I'm trying to get my clients, you know, just all the things they need so I can really be focused on, on my enjoyment next week. And uh, we're driving up, so it's going to be a bit of a long drive. So I'm sort of also preparing myself for that and making sure Drew and I have what we need to make it all the way up in one drive. Because initially we're going to do two, take two days, but we decided not to this this trip because we got to drive to Philly as well. So yeah, um, that's one thing that's just giving me a little anxiety being in the car for that long, but I'm super psyched to get up there. And then we had a lot of announcements since our last um, episode, some special stuff that's happening around the cap. First, um, our our own uh, uh, podcast network, Osiris, is hosting a live event on the 12th next door at Garcia's. Uh, they're going to be talking with Rick, um, Peter, and Jeff, and also having a little short acoustic set. Um, very exciting. It's going to be pretty cool. Um, I haven't been to any of Osiris events before, so I'm super excited to be there. I know a lot of other um, podcast hosts are going to be there on the, on the network, so it'll be cool to interact with them. And RJ, who's the CEO of Osiris, uh, you can follow him on Twitter at RJ. That's the letter R, the letter J, the letter B, E, E, and two. Um, on Twitter, he's asking folks to actually reply to him uh, with any questions that they want to ask Rick, Peter, and Jeff. Not that they'll all get asked, but he's uh, putting it out, kind of crowdsourcing a little bit of that content. So definitely check that out. And then just a day or two ago, uh, Peter and uh, Becky announced they're going to be doing a DJ set uh, after show on the 12th as well. The 12th is going to be very intense. Um, lots oh, uh, of stuff going Actually, on. I think it's a Friday. 
Oh, is it Friday? It is the Friday. Oh, it's yeah. Friday. Yeah. Oh, my bad. Yeah. Oh, thank goodness. Because I was like, that sounds like a lot of stuff going on. So, yeah. So, that's Friday night, which is the 10th? It's the 10th. Right? Yeah, the 10th. So, that's going to be, yeah, next door on there. So, definitely check that out. It's first come, first serve. I know Garcia's is not that big. It's going to be really interesting to see how all that works out. But I think it's pretty dope. Um, Becky's going to be spinning and Peter's going to be on a synth. And uh, I'm excited to see what they create together. It's going to be super cool. By the time... Y'all hear this episode. Uh, Alexius will have, uh, and I will have recorded a, a conversation with uh, Rebecca, with Becky Chimman, about um, her work with Peter on, on their PARC, um, their park designs. They just had a drop uh, around empathy. And so, yeah, uh, be on the lookout for that. That conversation is going to be on our feed very soon. And we're really lucky to um, have Becky say yes and come chat with us about that work. So be on the lookout for that. All right, let's get into our running segments. How do we get down? We're going to be talking about Indian River today. Um, which was just sort of something that organically happened in our group chat. Uh, just some general uh, stats about uh, Indian River before I turn the convo over to Hannah and Alexius. One, um, it debuted uh, December 20th in 2014 at the Factory Underground Studio in Norwalk, Connecticut. And it is a Goose original song. Uh, Goose has played this song 80 times, y'all. And Arabello has played it twice. This is one of the songs that has so many versions. It's hard to keep track of them all, but I'll go through a few different versions. They have a minor key version. If you listen to the June 19th, uh, 2020 show in Reading, Connecticut, you can hear that version. There's a bluegrass version of Indian River. If you listen to the 9-11-20 show in Yarmouth, uh oh my stuff just went. Okay. Uh, there's a piano version, the Pine Show um, on the July 3rd, 2021. There's the clav reggae version, which uh, is on the Moon River album. And then the one that we've been hearing most often recently is the 80s synth version, which we heard last at the Cincy show uh, for New Year's Eve. So yeah, uh, I, that took a lot to even just say all those versions, but shout out to Goose for taking a beautiful song and mm -hmm. playing it all these different ways so that it can touch so many different people, depending on which version, you know, sticks with you. And uh, with that, I will turn the conversation over to you, lovely ladies, to continue. So uh, I decided to sort of think about the different passages of this song and what it means for me. And uh, I guess I'm not a very patient person sometimes. So, and I feel like if I ever met Rick, I haven't, but if I did, I feel like he gives me patient vibes. Like he would, he just <laughs> is like calm and patient. And so a lot of his lyrics remind me to slow down and take in the world around me, appreciate things as they come. And I would definitely say for Indian River lyrics, that is the case. And so, um, you know, experience is all I truly know. When held slow, oh, but I move too fast. Is it the wind upon my neck? Is it the swaying of the trees? Well, I forget that time don't hold us for that long. So for me, I think about, um, I think about, well, my mom passing and how that was something that really gelled me to Goose and their lyrics and stuff like that. Um, and then like, I just had a birthday recently and I'm starting to feel my age and I'm feeling older. Um, I start, I'm starting to get more in tune with my dreams. Uh, I have to keep like a notebook next to my bedside table. So I'll like write down different things that I have in dreams. So that passage also sort of makes me think about that. Or like this song makes me think about that. Um, and so, um, I think we should try and sort of be more in touch with our, or in tune with our dreams and our ideas. And then, um, another passage I wanted to highlight is your voice is strong. Now I heard it in a dream, all your energy growing up in me. And though I know it's always here, I don't feel anything at all. Just heavy drones filling up my mind, short piece of time, dropping like a seed in the snow so that I have to let it go, but man, it's all I know. And so the sort of last thing I wanted to say is like, for me, songs have different meanings at different times, depending on where I'm at in my life. And so right now I'm going through a really difficult breakup. And so, um, you know, this was someone I thought that I was going to be with forever, that I'd have a family with. And so this this passage really resonates with me right now because sometimes, you know, you have to let things go and you don't know what that means for you or for your future. But um, it, it's like one of those things I have to let go of this relationship, but it feels 
like home. It feels like family to me. And so like, um, it's kind of all I've known or whatever for such a long time. Um, and so, yeah, I don't know. I think for me, the interpretation of songs and lyrics can change over time. And then um, I also just wanted to do a shout out to the Goose community because uh, they did a full-blown interpretation of this song for the Ted Poet Society. And so I looked at that as I was thinking about like, what is this song and what do these lyrics mean for me? Um, And so I just really appreciate that we have that community here. Like if you want to see what other people think about lyrics in a particular song, you can go to the Goose community website and look for the Ted Poet interpretation and sort of see that. And I just think that's a cool aspect of the Goose community for sure. Yeah, I love that we're always looking for meaning. And I also think, you know, Rick has these reoccurring themes around, um, you know, recognizing that your low points are what propel you to your higher points, you know? And this song continues that sort of theme. We hear it in Tumble. We hear it in so many of, of, of Rick's specific written songs. And so I always take that from here, you know, that time doesn't hold us for that long. And also that like, this is all I know. And like that experience of life is what kind of propels you and change is inevitable, right? And that we all have to kind of accept it and move along with it. And and I always think this song reminds me to not necessarily always fight against change, even though it's uncomfortable sometimes, but like, how do I get in sync with the flow of change? and um, How do I react in a way that allows me to move through it with the, you know, least amount of pain as possible, but also recognizing sometimes we learn from the pain too. And so I'm holding you tenderly right now, Hannah, as you're, you know, going through the breakup. I know it's really difficult and hard and um, yeah. So just sending a lot of love your way. I want to hear what Chelsea has to say because she, all of us is like the lyric. We call her (laughs) Empress for a reason. She always has the, the and like just great doing time. like a like a small tiny fraction of what you do, Chelsea, when you break down lyrics just now, it made me so anxious. Like I don't know if you could hear like my voice was like yeah, my, my my saliva was getting dry because it makes you have to be so vulnerable to do that. And mm. so I just it made me appreciate you and your lyrical interpretation even more. Oh, thanks! That's amazing. Well, I um I found your interpretation super interesting because I've literally never thought about the song that way. <laughs> um, and I'm like, oh, wow, that's that's really interesting um, to me. What, what this song means to me and how I look at it is um, it's about losing your loved ones. And um, when someone leaves us, they don't really leave us. They just um, yeah speak to us in a different way. So you know, your voice is strong now. I heard it in a dream. Your energy is growing up in me. Like to me, that's my aunts who passed away that um, they're always with me that this, you know, it's um, <clears throat> your relationship changes, but it's still there. Um, and so when I hear this song, that's what I think about is um, how are you listening to the way that they are communicating with you instead of focusing that they're not there? Um, just how can you still connect with them or um, whatever it is that you believe that you can. Um, and also, I just want to note, so that's, you know, what I always think of with this song, and I love a song. At New Year's Eve, they played this song, and the lighting struck me because it was just a bright light coming down, like, from the heavens. That's what it looked like to me. And um, they've never done that that I know of at a show uh, with this song. And so when the lighting was like that, I I remember I texted Nikki that night. I was like, Indian River, they had the light shining down from the heavens. I sent her a video. I was like, this was amazing. Um, because to me, that's exactly what it felt like was like, your people are still with you and they're here right now. And um, so that's what I, I will. I will be crying every time I hear that song live <laughs> now because um my I have dreams about my mom regularly mm-hmm. and usually in the dream she is part of the dream is her being diagnosed with cancer still but she looks normal and so I feel like it's her telling me that she wants me to remember her not being sick and then like I wake up and I'm like wait is she still alive like it's still very raw and very real to me but it definitely feels like her way of communicating and like me and my sister will text each other somewhat regularly like oh, this thing happened. Let me tell you the whole story. And like, that was mom looking down on us. And so, gosh, I'm just going to cry every time I hear that song now. 
thanks. Thanks, Chelsea, for your beautiful conversation. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, it's beautiful. It is a beautiful. I my interpretation of it is is kind of like the same as yours, Hannah, or was the same as yours. Um, is you know, is slowing slowing down and um and also so my big thing has always been on just learning, trying to learn how to embrace life and live life to the fullest. We only have a certain amount of time here and that we are here to do something. We are here, we have a bigger mission and we need to find, um, we need to find that and do good. Like kind of like I was saying, the Dalai Lama was saying the other day is, you know, to leave this world a cleaner place than, than when we came here and to also do a better place. And so, um, one of the lyrics for me, like, one of my life mottos, funny thing is I'm here for a good time, not a long time. And so, um, when he's saying, uh, when he's saying in the song, um, that time don't hold us, uh, for that long, all that long, you know, when he's saying that, that hit me very strong, like the first time I ever heard it, because, um, it was, after my sister had passed away. And so I guess I see, you know, what you're saying, Chelsea also is like, you know, she had just passed away and it was like, okay, we have, I have got to, I would say we, I have got to embrace this and I have got to make sure that I live my life to the fullest and that I do the best that I can for myself and the best that I can and be a great example to my girls, the best that I can possibly do. And, you know, so it just, um, and also, so that meant a lot to me. That's always been a lot. Um, the Incubus song warning, she called out a warning was always a big inspiration in my life. So when I heard this, you know, the time don't hold us for that long, you know, it was a big, a big, um, what is it? Uh, I forget the word, you know, I, um, just the same, you know, kind of the same, uh, the same meaning. And so, and also, um, I'm really big on experience and, um, experience is really all we really know. And the only thing I believe, no matter what the next, uh, the next life would be, if it's, um, the only thing that we can take with us to the next life is knowledge. And so it's very important for you to have to have knowledge, to take that seriously and to have these experiences. And so this song got me in a lot of different ways. And just like we were talking about, um, songs can mean different things on different days and on different times. And this song is one of those songs that I can play at different times and feel different ways. And it just always, it just makes me feel better. No matter what I need it for on that day, this is one of those songs that can ebb and flow, like whatever you need it for, you can, you can get that, get that from it. And so it's just a very, to me, it's just a very close song to my heart. And every time it gets me and, and just like we were going over the, the styles of the song, that's also another thing you can, you can enjoy it so many different ways and so many different, um, different versions of it. And, um, I will never forget. I was at the Louisville show on two eleven, and, uh, last year, 2022, and they started out with Jive One and then went into Indian River. And it was just such an awesome, like reggae vibe, like through the whole thing. And I probably definitely listen to not probably def well, not probably, but I definitely listen to, uh, Indian River from two eleven every, you know, to 11.22 every day. It just, it just fills my cup on that. That's definitely a song that I listen to every day. So I agree with, you know, with both of, both of your meanings and interpretations, because they do mean, they do mean both of those things at different times and at different ways. So a beautiful, it's a, just a beautiful song all the way around. And we were both at, or a lot of us were at that show before we knew each other. I was at that show. And that's one of my favorite versions. I was listening to that show before we started recording. (laughs) Yeah, me too. Yeah, I listened to the Moon River version right before we got on, uh, got on, on the, uh, 
to record today. I was like, wait, I, I want to listen to a, a different version than I usually <laughs> I want to listen to that one. It was good. Um, all right, we're going to move on to Goose Talk. And I think, Alexis, you got a little announcement to make about a competition that happened in Louisville last night. Oh, yes. Super exciting. It's so funny how this is all running together. This is not planned like this at all, peeps. It just came together like it should. So um, last night, there was a big competition happening. And the competition was for a spot um, at summer camp for up and coming bands, um, Summer Camp the Music Festival that Goose will be at this summer. So um, one of the bands competing for this, along with many other bands, uh, was Mr. Please, some Goose fans out of Louisville. I absolutely love them. And, um, and so I have heard that they, and we know that Houseplant is one of the after, after parties uh, for one night. And so they're getting together. I've heard through the rumors that Mr. Please is the other night. So which I, uh, so we will get for sure news on that. But I have definitely had the honor in meeting the guys from Mr. Please on my birthday. Alex and I ended up being side by side and jamming out to Animal the first time that it was played. Freshie. And so we immediately became best friends because that song was so awesome and just the bonding, you know, just the bonding over those things. So, but, um, so I woke up this morning and I was just praying the results were up on which band had won and they were up. So drum roll, Mr. Please won. I'm so, so, so excited. Oh my gosh, so cool. Yeah. I'm, I'm just like, I. you would think it was, <laughs> that it was my band. Like, I'm just so beyond excited. So they are going to be, so they're going to be at SCAMP this summer, which short for summer camp. And so while you're there seeing Goose, make sure that you put Mr. Please on your checklist because I promise you, you will not regret it. They are absolutely awesome. They are definitely something that you don't want to miss and something that you definitely want to put on your on your playlist because they are awesome. You will, you'll really enjoy them. I awesome. love adding them to my list yeah, uh, for summer camp. And I also want to say we also had this competition in my hometown uh, last week or a couple weeks ago. And so shout out to Flabbergaster, local band. They will be playing summer camp as well. Awesome. I love that competition to get into, uh, to play on the yeah. stage of summer camp. Such a cool, just so, so great about the music. One, it gives so much more exposure to additional bands that even if they don't make it to the, you know, to the stage at summer camp is amazing. But also it puts me in mind, somebody had posted on Twitter, a side-by-side -side of Peach Vest, um, roster from 2019 and from this year and you know goose was the the third font on the bottom in 2019 and now they're the biggest font on the flyer and it was just so you know when i think about a band like houseplant or um you know mr please like getting onto these bills like how it can open so many opportunities for these bands to get exposed to more people and we see from 2019 to 2023 you know goose just like hop skipped and jumped all the way up the um, the roster um for for peach fest so yeah just congratulations to all of them and and yeah it's, it's a beauty of fest that people get to be exposed to different music than they may be and that bands that may not have the money to tour get to be out here and see more people so that's really awesome it is yeah. I don't know if y'all saw like I'm gonna totally bring this up later also but um I don't know was the announcement this week or a couple of other a couple of weeks ago but Houseplant is doing Dome Fest so yes I saw that it's their first fest and I was so excited yes, for them so it's cool awesome so Louisville yeah. you know we had the announcement of Louisville and then we have the announcement of Houseplant doing an after party and Mr. Please doing an after party so everyone who's in Louisville gets to experience both of those bands and after parties and then they also get their first music festivals this year. So these guys are the most humble, most amazing and talented guys ever. So definitely put them on your list. Definitely meet them at shows. They're totally and follow them on social media, Mr. Please and and look up Houseplant. So they are awesome. Love them. Awesome. And huge Goose fans. Yeah. And musicians that are huge Goose fans, you know, their music can be good. So that's just, okay, I don't definitely. feel like that's a good adage to apply. And I also wonder if like, you know, I'm pretty sure that Jeb would be, Jeb, you know, supports Houseplant, wears their shirts and stuff. 
And so I'm calling a, not, I haven't been told any of this, but I'm calling a Jeb sit-in on with Houseplant because he was at the, um, the after party that they were at and uh, for New Year's, he was there, you know, so I bet you anything while that they're in Louisville, I, I hope he does. I bet he'll probably sit in with them and play with them. And I wonder if someone will sit in with Mr. Please because they're both they're both really big fans and they're both amazing bands. So, you know, so but hopefully they both get a sit in each night. That would be that really would be awesome. Cool. Yeah, yeah, very cool. All right, Chelsea, we're going to turn over to you to talk about our fan art spotlight for this week. All right. So this week, I thought we would highlight... Uh, TEC, that's Tolan County Engraving, which is by Uncle John and our lovely Miss Tina Varner, um, one of our favorite goose chicks. So they do custom engraving, um, things like coasters. You can get a whole set list engraved on something. Um, they do picture frames, cutting boards, agates, keychains, and they do a lot with goose lyrics. Um, again, it's custom though, so you could ask them probably to engrave whatever lyrics you want. I personally, I did not get this custom, but they posted it. I personally have an engraved agate from them that has like a little mountain and sunlight scene on it. And it says seep up all the light. Nice. And I have it on my altar with all my other things that I uh, use daily, my crystals and things. So I love that. Um, and they were so sweet when I bought it because the one I wanted there was two and the one I wanted, someone snagged it like right before I had a chance and they're like, oh, we'll give you the other one. And uh, Tina gave me like free shipping or something. She, Uncle John was like, um, Tina said you're a goose chicken to give you a deal. So <laughs> so they were so sweet. So I was like, oh, thank you. And that was before I even really knew her. She just knew I liked her, I like her post or whatever. So, so sweet. Um, they will do anything custom for you. They also recently posted, and these went super fast too, some wooden trays that had lyrics from the Doobie song. Oh, smart. Is it take a little hit from the Doobie? Yeah. Yes. Those were uh, amazing. I know they went fast though. I think there was like four they posted and they were like immediately taken. Yeah, they were. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So when they do post things, they go quick. Otherwise, hit them up for a custom uh, piece. And that again, they're on Facebook. Um, their Facebook name is TEC dash Toland, T O L L A N D, County Engraving. And we'll include that link in our show notes as always. Thanks so much, Chelsea. Uh, for our podcast lowdown this week, we are talking about No Simple Road, which is hosted by Aaron Mallon Apple and produced by Corey. I'm going to read the description of the show. It says, We are more than just a Grateful Dead podcast, more than a music and culture show something other than a deadhead family of cosmic wanderers. We're real people living a life uncommon and we've grown into a thriving community, the No Simple Road family. It really has been a trip to see where this show has taken us. Back in 2017, we started a Grateful Dead podcast and soon it became so much more than just the Grateful Dead. No Simple Road has turned into a show about the whole music scene, the community of freaks, heads, weirdos, misfits, dabblers, and wild cards that we are a part of and love so much. Beyond the music, we delve into the worlds of comedy, food, art, books, and the things that turn us on, make us think, bring us joy, and make us smile. And they're grateful to have us all along on the ride with them. So you can check them out. I'll have the um, link there. You can just go to nosimpleroad.com. And uh, this, not this, well, actually, yes, Friday, and when you guys are listening to this on Wednesday, this two days from now, um, their episode will feature Chelsea and myself. We got to have an amazing conversation with Aaron and Mel about this show, about Goose, about music. It was uh, just an amazing combo. So we'll be on their show a few days after this comes out. So definitely check that out and follow them and subscribe to their show as well. Uh, we are going to take a quick break. And when we get back, we'll have our guests for today, Sean and Sarah. We'll be right back.
Welcome back, everyone. We are so blessed to be joined by some special guests today to talk about the LGBTQ plus experience in the Goose Band community. We're joined by Sean and Sarah. If y'all would just introduce yourselves, that would be really amazing. And so, so thankful that you joined us today. Thank you for having us. My name is Sean Bates, he, him. I'm Sarah and it's she, her. Awesome. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm going to actually turn over the floor to Alexius and Hannah to have this great conversation, but I'll pipe in here and there. So Alexius, take it away. Well, thank you so much for Sean uh, Sean and Sarah joining us today. I absolutely love y'all and love rocking out and jamming out with y'all at shows. Um, this is super special t- for me, for y'all to be on the show with us and talking about such um an intimate issue and then also such an issue that needs to be discussed more that people don't want to discuss and you know and but it's definitely something that needs to be discussed and um I think it's awesome and are very thankful that you are coming on and discussing it in the goose scene and you know helping us to realize what the scene is looking like from your perspective and what we can do to make it better So um, in the jam band scene, you know, in rock and roll in general, historically has not been super accepting of the LBGTQ plus community. What is it like to be out at shows or are you out at the shows? Well, first, I want to say that we love you, too. And we're really excited to be on the show. Guys, you're awesome. Um, So I am out and. Honestly, it's been great. Like, I don't know. Everyone's super loving and accepting. Like, I don't know. You know, I've met people maybe once, but like, it's like lifetime, you know, connections. So, right. It's been, it's been great. Yeah. Obviously, I'm out too. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, everybody in the whole community is just super welcoming and not everybody. Sorry. Most of the people in the community are super welcoming and um, accepting. Yeah. That's so awesome. I'm sorry to sorry to interrupt. So why don't oh. y'all give us a little bit of your background of you know um in in the LBGTQ plus community? Because at first when I met you, Sean, um, I don't know. I I aren't you in the aren't you in the transition right now? Uh-huh. Aren't you transitioning? And so I think that that's really awesome. And I'm so excited to be with you on that journey about this. And so if you don't mind, you know, do you want to tell us a little bit of like, because you've been transitioning with us in the Goose community. And um, I don't know if some people know or not, you know, and so it would be, I think it that's an awesome thing for people in the community to know, and for us all to be on that transition to you know together and you know be here as a family because that is it's a beautiful beautiful experience to be with you on this so there's I've been I guess I started my transition like uh physically by taking testosterone and whatnot um this past August so Meriwether Post Pavilion was like my first one of my first actually wasn't my first show on testosterone but I don't know there's like so many aspects to like coming out whether it's like at work or Um, with friends, with family, and, like, the Goose community has honestly been, like, the easiest. I remember, you know, I was Sarah Bates on Facebook, and, um, you know, everyone knew me as Sarah Bates, and then I went to the Meriwether show and was like, hey, I'm Sean, and Mark Comito just embraces me, and he's like, I love you, I'm so proud of you, like, welcome, Sean, and, like, he's like, I see you, and um, Jennifer Copeland, and Lauren, and just every binky, like, you, everybody, just been amazing, and it's been super easy and I don't know. It's, um, it yeah, makes me uh, happy to know that you have a, a safe place and that you feel, you know, because it is, it's beautiful. Like just seeing like you come, you come together as yourself and, you know, all of us have been inspired in different ways and just, and you're exactly right. I met you as Sarah, you know, and so, and now, now you're Sean. So it's, right. um, it's absolutely amazing. And so I'm excited, you know, that's a wonderful thing for all of us in the goose community to be on this, on this journey together. And, um, so. um, How did y'all, how did y'all find goose and like when, yeah, when did y'all become goose fans? And is that, yeah, I'm just curious about that. Like when, when you started getting into Mm -hmm. goose and yeah. 
Uh, Goose has been there through everything. Like, and I know that's like everyone's story and it's like so cliche, but um, I want to say I found them in like 2019. (laughs) In like 2019, I found Moon Cabin and I was still abusing um, methamphetamine. Um, I recently, I got help. It's been three, three years or so. Congratulations, Um, Sean. That's amazing. Well, thank you. Um, So yeah, I found them and then I saw them at this tiny bar in Albany, New York, the parish. Uh, parish, I can't remember. In, yeah, the Parish Public House, I think, in 2019. And then the next COVID happened and life happened. My next show was Mohegan Sun Goosemas. <laughs> you know, it was just, yeah, it was crazy, just the difference. And um, we met, and on our first date, I invited her over for coffee. And I think I put on Peach Fest 2019, and it's been love ever since. <laughs> yeah, that was when I discovered Goose. <laughs> um, and Unfortunately, I didn't have them when I was going through my own struggles with addiction. Um, but I have them now, so that's all that matters. <laughs> but yeah, that's when I uh, discovered them. I love it. I love that sentiment, Sean, where you're just like, Goose has been there through everything. I think you're right. It's such a familiar story of like, you know, obviously the pandemic was a thing we all collectively went through, but also our individual struggles that Goose and their music and the community has kind of helped all of us work through, get through, um, make it through. Um, uh, even up till I know Alexis was just talking earlier, you know, she's been having you know, just a rough time. I, this goose drought has been particularly difficult. I don't know why, but I'm excited for them to be back on stage and us to see them <laughs> playing live again. And so, yeah, I'm just, that's so, such a beautiful sentiment. I think it's a, a through line through all of our shows so far is this notion that goose is there for us, right? In one way, shape or form. So I, I just love that sentiment. Right. Sharing. I think, I think too, like, uh, music has this ability to be so healing. And so I've noticed that within the jam band scene, there are a lot of folks in recovery, like uh, someone just posted on Al Goose uh, and then it turned into a thread about people talking about their um, their various experiences and journeys with uh, addiction and then being in recovery and stuff like that. And so I just, to me, that's so powerful. And even though I do drink and I do, you know, party and everything, like I just have so much love and respect for our community that we provide that space. And I would be remiss if I didn't put my women's and gender studies hat on and say that (laughs) the LGBTQ plus community has higher rates of mental health issues and addiction issues. So just like, I love that being able to see how music has been healing, a healing part of for both of your journeys or whatever, like we need more of that in our community. (laughs) Right. Absolutely. We do. It's, um, funny that not funny it's about your journey on this and us talking about you know journeys and how it is in the community and um I you know being on the podcast and stuff I worry about certain things if I say certain things and I because you don't want to bring any negative light to anything or any other people that you're involved with but I've always been involved um with charities my cousin passed away of an OD And so I've always been involved with charities, you know, um, that have, uh, and I'm not going to say that I have had my addiction issues because I definitely have, I'm definitely not, you know, guilty of that. And so because of that and living in those shoes, I have, um, you know, now I have Narcan in the back of my car and, and testing strips. And so, um, I've been worried. I'm like, how do I put this online? Because before I've never had any problem. Like I wasn't, you know, connected to anything. So, um, but for all shows and stuff with this, uh, with this charity that I work with in town and in North Carolina, I always make sure to bring a box of Narcan with me and testing strips. So if anyone at any show, you know, needs anything, let me know because you are, I will never say anything. You can always send me a private message. I will mail it to you. I definitely do that with a lot of people in the community because you know, a lot of people definitely party. I party, we all party. So it's okay. You know, so if anyone ever needs anything, let me know. And definitely proud of everyone, you know, that that has gotten sober and, you know, those 
those experiences and it's a hard thing. So I just, that was, sorry, that was just like a segue into, you know, talking about that. I was like, well, maybe, maybe I should bring it up. Maybe this, Mm -hmm. you know, let's show that it's not a bad thing, you know, that you can, that we can get over, you know, that, that it's not always an addiction that you can have an addiction, but you know, that you need to need to be careful of things. So, but if anyone ever, ever needs anything, I definitely have that because that's always a traumatic thing. And we're here to help spread love and joy and peace. I actually love that you mentioned that, Alexis. I just think it's great. And um, I've seen you like providing that service for folks, you know, in line or at shows and things. And I I think, again, it's one of those things that the more we talk about it, the more we destigmatize, the better off. You know, we all oh, yeah. are as a community. So yeah. I, it's I sad that I should that I should feel like bad about trying to, you know, trying to help. But you know, it's definitely and even I tell my friends who don't even do things, I'm like, hey, take a box because you don't know if you're going to be standing beside someone. You know, take a strips are so expensive. Like I'm handing these things out for free, like candy. Like you know, even if you don't need one, <laughs> someone else oh, no. might need one that yeah. you know, you know. So. But yeah, and that's, it's definitely, destigmatizing is definitely what we need to do. And I think that that's something that the Goose community is definitely, well, I feel what I've experienced so far that the Goose community is uh, on the frontier, like, you know, is that band that's providing all those things before others, you know, before other bands, because I'm big into music and going into different shows and stuff and I just don't don't see that at different different shows and different communities and so I would I hope that other bands do that also maybe I'm missing it but I I love that um, harm reduction is becoming more and more commonplace Mm -hmm. uh I can speak anecdotally having words on different research projects and stuff related to harm reduction that it does seem like there is overrepresentation of the LGBTQ plus community on the front lines of harm reduction. And so I think, I think that's kind of interesting. Like, um, I, I, worked for a nonprofit that did work with Hawaii's um, harm reduction center and like almost everyone I know there who works there is queer. Um, And so that's what I'm thinking about. Um, But I also um, like kind of thinking about the music scene and stuff like that. Uh, You know that I've been talking to, well, the podcast folk, regular folks know that I've been talking to a researcher and professor uh, who's a Grateful Dead expert. Like that's what she researches. And one of the things she was saying about like, um, well, she has a lot to say, but um, one thing that we were thinking through is like the drug scene uh, at lot. And a lot of people who were on tour with the Grateful Dead and who sort of did research and stuff like that on the Grateful Dead said like in the late 80s is when things kind of got dark with like heroin being so prevalent on lot and stuff like that. And how that sort of transferred over to the fish lot scene whenever fish fish blew up because it was like the right place, right time type situation where it was like, people were getting away from the dead scene in the late eighties and going into fish in the early nineties. So, um, and then we see what happened with Trey and everything like that. So I also want to give a lot of props to that, the fish scene and Trey, because he's done so much with like creating an opening space for fish fans who are dealing with addiction. He has his, um, his center in what's it, Connecticut, I think that he's building. And then, you know, just, just having, I don't know. I think there's like a good harm reduction scene now in the fish seen from what from my friends who are super into it so yeah harm reduction definitely saved my life like um whether it be like clean needles or uh just just the support from my parents while I was using um it definitely saved my life and made me want to get clean and try to live clean yeah Sarah thank you for saying that um I lived in Europe um like 20 years ago. And, you know, when I was over there, there were clean, uh, I guess, like every five blocks, there was a clean needle place and you could go and it put your needle in and it would pop out a clean needle. And at first I was just like, what, what's going on? And then, you know, as I lived there, they were just like, you know, people are going to do what people are going to do. We just need to reduce the harm of it. And, you know, 
we are not going to be able to stop it and we just need to make it the cleanest for everyone. And so you didn't see, you know, you didn't see needles all over the place. People had clean needles, you know, you didn't have to worry about just all the things that come with it. And so I know that this is the LBGT uh Q plus conversation and it's turned into more. And I absolutely love this because this is harm reduction is exactly what we need. And that's, that's a big, a big thing. And, um, and it's awesome to hear that in the goose community that we are trying to, that we are trying to make a difference and we are trying to do this. And so, um, uh, so, but we uh, talk about, Go ahead, Hannah. Oh, well, I was just going to say, so um, we talked like a little bit about um, sort of the culture of the LGBTQ plus experience with jam bands and, and goose and stuff like that. But there's one question that I just really want to ask because it's something I think about a lot. Um, so like in general for me, um, as accepting as a goose community is, as you know, it is somewhat more diverse than other jam band scenes. Um, what does it mean? Like I sometimes feel guilty as a queer woman listening and loving a band that's so cis het. And like <laughs> some of like like some of my queer friends don't get it, I think. And so like how do you sort of contend with that? Um, or like, I don't know, what, what's your thoughts on that? I just would really want to make sure that question gets asked. <laughs> I can definitely feel that for sure. To be honest, I don't I don't know very many queer artists. That's mm -hmm. terrible. I like I've been thinking about this all day and I don't know. I guess I don't know too many like queer artists. So I guess like there just needs to be more queer artists and definitely in the jam scene as well. Like queer musicians would be yeah. great. I think like the drummer of Aqueous uh, might be like out as gay. But I mean, other than that, it's like, I don't know frequent yeah. yeah 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 that's what I was yeah I was looking it up too I was just like well, I wonder how many Hannah do you how many are there a lot of uh, are we missing things are there or you know there's there isn't a lot um but one one nod I'll give is like there's a Grateful Dead cover band that I believe more recently they started like touring more full time. It's Brown Eyed Women. And I know that it's all women who perform. And then I think maybe some of their members are queer, but I'm not 100% sure. Yeah. Um, I know that there's like a pretty big uh, queer deadhead scene, especially on social media and stuff like that. Um, so I can kind of say that... Um, if people like more like bluegrassy experimental indie music, one of my favorite musicians is Tao Nguyen. She's queer. Um, she's the tour with Tao and the Get Down, Stay Down, but now she's been doing a solo thing more recently. But um, I remember when I first started seeing her live, she would, um, she was really into the banjo at the time. And so she plays a bunch of different string instruments. Um, if anyone's familiar with the tune yards, um, she's done a lot of work with them and they mix for a lot of artists that you probably know, but you may not recognize their music, but then you'd be like, oh, they worked with all these different people that I recognize. But yeah, in a lot of ways, the, you know, I'm like always thirsting after queer artists, you know, and that's right. usually how I find them. Um, and so, yeah, like in the jam band scene, there was a queer uh, lead singer of a jam band when I was in college that played the Ohio circuit and I loved her. Um, I guess their, like their band is defunct. Oh, wow. I guess like thinking like there's maybe one of my queer friends, like kind of likes goose, but not enough to like, you know, listen on their own. So I guess I get it in that aspect. Like they're like, what, what are you listening to? <laughs> yeah. Like it's goose. They're awesome. <laughs> So, um, but yeah, there needs to be more representation for sure. Definitely. Definitely. I don't know why I don't, I was thinking about Tame Impala for some reason, because I thought that Tame Impala used they, them pronouns in my head, but maybe I'm making that up. I don't know. I have to, I have to look it up after we get off. But I had that in my head, especially because, you know, Jeff has a Tame Impala um, cover band, which is so specific and niche. Like, it's so Jeff. <laughs> really well. It is. Check that out. <laughs> Extra niche. But yeah, that was one that, that came up in my head that I was thinking about was him and Paula as well. Yeah. 
I think too, like you don't always know if an artist is queer and like on the one hand, knowing about queer identities is important for representation. But then like, I know Tao Wen never like came out. She just was like uh, being interviewed and was like, oh, by the way, my wife and she had just got married. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's like, um, right. and like she's written songs earlier in her career that were like cute little love songs that were definitely heteronormative where she's using like he, him pronouns about her love interest or whatever. So, you know, you just, I guess there's that part too. Like you don't necessarily know if someone has a queer identity. Right. right. That's true. That's what I was, you know, like for me, um, one thing that I've always realized and people like people make fun of me for doing is because I could care less who you are, what you, you know, or what I care about what's on the inside, you know, and that's what I care about. I don't care about, you know, what your family does, you know, what your job is, what any of that, like, I just care what comes from your heart. So for me, it's, and I, I just don't see, you know, I don't see it that way. And maybe that's because, you know, I have a husband and, but it's, but I just don't look at people that way. And I don't look at, you know, I don't look at colors. I don't look at nationalities. And um, I guess some people would say that that's very naive, that that's not the case. And, but I don't feel that I do. I feel that, you know, um, but I just. I think it's like, it's important to acknowledge that those differences exist. Like, definitely, you know, we can't say we live in a colorblind or a post-racial society or mm -hmm. um, a post-feminist society. You know, mm -hmm. because we know that these these isms and these microaggressions are institutionalized. So, like, I get what you're saying, totally, Alexis. Where uh, Alexis, where it's like, yeah, like. Um, I want to see, like, see through that clutter of, like, how, mm -hmm. like, how fucked up, I guess, our society. Yeah. But then, like, we also have to acknowledge, like, even if we don't want to see those things, like, they are there and they exist. And it's important to, like, name it so that we can, it, because how can you fight against an ism if you don't uh -huh. name it? Like, racism is real. I True. see that in my right. everyday life from my friends who are people of color. And so, like, now that I've identified it, I can actively work against it and be anti-racist or right. like, you know, anti-homophobic or, you know, right. Whatever and I guess, is. I guess that's where I don't know how to put my words together on that because I led the Black Lives Matter March. I'm very much involved with, you know, uh, with minority I feel, and I'm not, you know, I'm just a woman and a disabled woman, you know, and the only minority that I have is just being a woman. I call like being a ginger and stuff, you know, and disability, but I am definitely involved in, and I guess I just don't, we all like not, we all need to work on how we say things. And I think that that's very important. Like we don't realize because what I just said was not proper, even though, the, or not the right way to say it, not, you know, wasn't the correct way to say it, even though that I am 100% in agreement and work against these things and, you know, do uh, having marches against it, you know, working, working with others against it and teamwork. And, you know, cause I am all for, we need to see this. We need to identify this. We need to make sure that we are working against it and, but also not get so, overwhelmed with it to where you know to where that's just like oh I'm not doing this so I guess that's that's what I'm trying to say and I don't know how to properly say that no I I think like I don't know I would rather someone have the the vulnerability to say something even if it's not 100% you know you said proper but like politically correct or whatever you want to say because you know you're still thinking the things you're still trying to find the language. And if you don't try, if you don't make yourself vulnerable in that way, there's no, there's no room for discourse. And so she's I would not rather, defensive. what? Sorry, Sorry. Oh, no, I was just saying that she's not defensive either. And she's like, yeah, really yeah, yeah, totally. Like, how can you even have a conversation about something if you're not speaking up in the first place, you know? So like, I just appreciate that you're not afraid to say like, this is what I'm thinking. And then like, you know, be receptive to the discourse that happens afterwards. You know what I mean? Like, right. yeah, totally. So, and, um, 
And that's what I've heard a lot of people say, because I totally get it. So I was just trying, you know, you, y'all all know me. So we all know that discussion, (laughs) you know, so we all know that this is not, you know, not that I'm just trying to, and we all know that my words are like the worst thing with, you know, with the epilepsy and remembering and stuff, but just trying to, because people will say that. And then we all look at them just like, really? You know, and so I just wanted to like kind of bring that up as a topic because people be like, why are you even bringing that up? You know, and it's this because this is important. This needs to be addressed. And, you know, once it's addressed and we can all it's it's just very important. And so, but yeah, that's a great question. Yeah, and I wanted to ask Sean too, you know, as someone who is part of this Goose community and goes to Goose shows, who is like visibly part of a marginalized community, as are you, Sean, like what is it like to, you know, be at a show, know that you are, you know, visually different than everybody around you? And does that affect your ability to kind of connect in the moment? What are the things that have made you more comfortable? So yeah, I just love to hear about that because I know I have my own process that I've gone through myself. So I'd love to hear from you. I mean, obviously you've gone through transition in the community, but I also know that there's a specific thing that happens when you walk into a space, you recognize that, you know, you're one of the few or one of the only sometimes. And what does that do to your ability to, you know, fully enjoy the space to fully, you know, let yourself be yourself in that space. Yeah. That's a really good question. I mean, honestly, I know I have anxiety, but I never really thought about it until you like asking this, but like, I feel anxious. I feel like it's really hard to connect in the moment. I feel like I'm looking around and I don't know, just feeling uncomfortable, even though everyone's really nice and everything, there's still, there's still moments like at the Meriwether uh, show that I went to, you know, I was, I had that great hug with Mark and everything, but then it separate, maybe I think I went to use the bathroom and I'm standing in line and it's the first time I've used the men's room. So I'm like literally shaking like a leaf in my skin. And the guy behind me looks over. Well, I didn't even look. He he's just makes his comment and he's like, wow, I wish he's like, I'm going to say that I identify as a woman so I can go use the woman's room. And I look over and there's nobody there. It's totally empty. So, I mean, yeah, I guess it like sometimes I feel uncomfortable is as loving and nice as everyone is. That's a really good point. It's kind of lonely sometimes and it is hard to get out of my out of my head and just vibe. Yeah, I, I that's that's really I'm glad I asked because I was thinking about it for myself and like where how do I get myself to a place? Uh, one of the things I do is I just become hyper visible. So, so my hair is like really bright colors. Like I just it's one it's a safety mechanism for me, which I didn't yeah. realize at first. It it turned into something that I was like, well, if I'm super hyper visible, there's like a a bit of safety in that. Like everybody can see me and um I'm calling attention to myself, but also there's some, you know, safety and visibility sometimes. Um and so I just, yeah, that, that I resonate with that so much of just kind of like, how do you get yourself into a headspace where you can be present in your body, you can enjoy the things that are going on and not be as concerned about what's going on around you and, um, and potential, you know, stressors and, you know, things that can, that, that can interrupt that, that moment that you're with. So, you know, for me, it's about like, who's around me? Am I I'm yeah. always introducing myself to everybody that's next to me? I'm always, you know, doing those kind of types of things so that I can feel that anxiety like lower and lower and lower right. as we get closer and closer to, you know, to start time. We have, we always have so much time so waiting right. for Goose to take the stage. <laughs> and so, so for, like, yeah, should I come on it? Yeah, 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 exactly. So, so yeah, for me, that's one of the things that I've done is just like make friends with people around me or at least talk. And, and if there's a, something that's a little off, like I'll know then. And so I'll kind of have a little more information, you know, for myself and just kind of help me, you know, feel more comfortable or at least know like, okay, I've got my eye on this side or I'll say something to Drew or Jason or whoever's next to me and to be like, Hey, keep an eye on this person. Or I got a little bit of a weird vibe. So, you know, just those kinds of things, just to kind of pick up on and to keep ourselves safe and, um, and make other people aware that they should be looking out for you in a specific kind of way. Right. One of those things, the things I love about the goose community is this way in which we're able to just like name the things we need, like in the moment. Um, Which is not, it's not a very, um, it's very unusual. It's, it's a very unique thing. Um, you know, I've been a fish fan for like 30 years and I go to tons of fish shows and it's not to say that they don't take care of each other, but it's not exactly as, it's, it's a lot, it's a reactionary 
care. And mm-hmm. what I've noticed in the Goose community, it's a very proactive approach mm-hmm. to caring for each other, like talking about it in advance. What do you need to be okay at the show? You know, we had my husband and his friend Michael on and their first like, you know, meet cute was Michael being like, you look really thirsty, dude. I'm getting you some water. Like, you know, so it's, it's, it's those types of things. And I think that this community is well suited to have these kinds of conversations and help people be more aware of like how you can be proactively supportive of people. This goes back to what Ashley talked about a groove save, just like Mm -hmm. it's, it's, you know, it's a lot about what we do before something bad happens or before somebody is meant to, made to feel uncomfortable in a space. Um, in addition to our reaction, it's like both and we have to be aware of both both sides of that, I think. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that because as you were speaking, I was thinking this is a lot of what we talked about of women being at shows and kind of those, you know, things that you were talking about of making friends with the people around you, making sure people are aware, you know, that sort of thing is just um you know, something Ashley touched on with Groove Safe, so it applies in many different areas. Um, so I'm I'm glad you mentioned Groove Safe on that too. Yeah, and I I really struggle with anxiety. And uh, at one of the taboo shows, I was like laying in the bathroom on a bench or something, like just trying to get it together because I could barely breathe or whatever. And like panic attack. Yeah, I was having a panic attack. Um, just from the amount of people, I think. But like five or six different women checked on me and just like made sure I was okay and didn't need like water or whatever. Um, obviously I just needed a minute and some air, but yeah, it was, it was <laughs> Women's bathrooms and uh, in there, um, it's the most positive and upbeat place to be. <laughs> and it's, it really, you know, if anyone ever says that to you again, Sean, just be like, hey, I would much rather be I in the women's bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I have no idea what goes on in there. <laughs> I remember um, when I was in college, we had this friend who, um, he, he's actually, he was, I was talking about my friend Tyler. Tyler and Andrew were roommates, and that's how I met Tyler was through Andrew. I think, whatever. I met one, anyway. But he's like cis hat, white dude. But for us, he was always very non-threatening. And so he would always be, he would always go in the women's restroom with us. And like, we were regulars at this bar. So usually everyone recognized him and recognized us and was fine. But like, I remember one time it happened where like these girls were like, oh my God, there's a a guy in the women's room. And we were like, it's just Andrew. Like, you know, but it's just like, that was our, our cis privilege, right? It's just like for us, you know, and so hearing you talk about that, I was like, damn, like I have been a little asshole in my early days when it came to bathroom and stuff. But it's just like, you don't think, I wasn't thinking about that. Like at the time, I didn't really have any trans or non-binary friends. And so I had never thought about it before when I was in my early 20s. We learn and we grow. I mean, I remember when I was 16, I was like, "Uh, I'm gay, I'm not racist. And like, clearly there's a lot of things that I've had to work through and that I mean, we all have to work through. You know. For sure, definitely. (laughs) You're amazing. So, um... So at the same time, Rick and Peter write really complex songs and lyrics. So I feel like their songs speak to me and what I'm going through in relationships, regardless of my sexual orientation. Um, do you think there are other songs, the other songs are, univer- are universal in that way? I mean, for me, yeah, they they hit home for me, especially I was reading some lyrics earlier and I think Arcadia doesn't use pronouns or not many. Uh, Willie's Tiger, I don't think uses any. The way, yeah, the way in which Rick writes, I think, is um, unique in that he doesn't really specify. Yeah. Yeah. Peter's I've noticed, um, I don't know if it's different because ah. I'm trying to think there was echo over rose i want to say uses she um and that's that's a rick song i think but peter sounds like honeybee um whales mm-hmm. trying to think they use she but at the same time um it's like his past experience you know yeah so and that hits for me especially because i i'm you know marrying a woman so <laughs> they, i don't know i feel it used to work for me but now that sean <laughs> <laughs> They still hit. Yeah. They still yeah, 
Right. Yeah, I think that's real. I always like Hannah has this great uh, thing. She says like if people are asking about Goose and what songs they should listen to, she asks them if they're a Paul or John from the Beatles person, and that kind of like leads them to either Peter songs if you're Paul, and uh, you know Rick songs if you're. Uh, John, but I, I don't know, I've done that many times, Hannah. Thank you very much for that. Hand. <laughs> well, yeah. people to goose. It's a great way to do so. Also, just playing a Ray Below is a great, another way to kind of get people in. They sure. can hear the acoustic pieces and then like jump into the rock side. Um, that is what sold me. Yeah. yeah. The, yeah. The, the Ray Ray show. Yeah. Absolutely. It's great entry points. Um, so very smart on them to have that as a, as a way yeah. starting yeah. With acoustic and, and, you know, transitioning to a Ray Below. But I, I think, Rick songs because they're so thematic in nature versus Peter's, which are very storytelling oh, type of songs, you know. Rick really approaches his songwriting, or it seems to me most of the songs he writes are very thematic in nature. And so they're kind of lofty, very high level view of like world and experience yeah. and things like that. And so I I find them to be more universally applicable because of yeah. that. And then mm-hmm. when I listen to Peter's songs, I'm like, oh, this is an experience Peter had. And he's yeah. talking about yeah. it, right? So it's, yeah. a, it's like a, yep. a different approach to it. So I can appreciate it, even though I don't, I may not be like, oh yeah, I have a honeybee. But um, I'm, I'm like, oh, but I, I hear it in Peter's voice and like about him talking about himself. And with Rick, it's like, okay, what is he trying to tell me? Like what is right. Right. What, to what hill am I trying to get up? What flag am I grabbing? Like you know, those, yeah. that's where I always go to with Rick songs. So I feel like there's a little bit of I think there's some truth there, and like Rick's lyrics being a little more universal, um, yeah. just because of the topics he tackles and like the the things yeah, that he also I also think about. something about like needing to process your own personal experiences through music, whether that's listening to music or playing music or writing music like it is for Peter, like, you know, there's still something that resonates with his storytelling or like the way he writes, even if it's not like, oh, like he's telling this story that he experienced and I experienced the exact same thing. But it's like that idea of like having music be a way for you to process what's happening to you or what you're experiencing. I think like a lot of us can relate to that. Absolutely. Right. I was um, watching, well, all this is like going together. Last night I was watching um, on goosecommunity.com, Deepak has the chat with Rick. And so they're talking, they're going through many different things and like stages. And um, I'm not for sure if y'all know, but Rick's father passed away um, when he was very young. And so he's talking about his writing, you know, his writing process and and the way that he does things and how that, you know, that he wants things to be all inclusive and for people, for it to be a vessel for people to learn and that he doesn't want for it to mean one thing and that it's not, it's about being a vessel to learn and that he wants for everyone to get what they get out of it. And so it's, it's just, really interesting watching that interview over and over and over, you know, Mm -hmm. because um, just the different ways that he views it and the ways that he's talking about writing songs and, you know, and sometimes when he's got a block and Matt Campbell coming in and helping him write and, you know, so it's, it's just really interesting in how that each song hits us each different ways. And we, and, and not, each different ways and at each different time in our life, you know, at one point it can mean this one thing, you know, six months down the road, you can be doing something else and something else be happening in your life. And you have an epiphany and you're like, Oh, wow. This song. Yeah. I totally get this. And then it hits on just another level. And so it just changes all the way through it. And I think through my experience with Goose that that's been the way it is, is, I love, you know, we'll we'll say all the time, oh, this is my favorite song today. Because yeah, same. <laughs> Mine there's, changes every day. Nope. There's not one favorite song because it's well, what are we going through? How does it hit with us? You know, what do we need for that uplifting support and to get through? I wanna I wanna build off of that because I I feel like I've been listening to so much jam music and so much goose lately. Like, do you think there's something about this particular genre where like, like we were talking about Indian River and um, how there's like the synth version, the reggae version, the regular version, the array below version. Is it, is the, are these different versions and these different jams why we're able to be like, 
this version of this song and this moment is my favorite. And then a few days later, it's this other version or it's a completely different song. Like, is it the genre or is it the people who gravitate toward the genre? Like, what do, what do y'all think? I don't know. Is that too much? Sorry. I think it's too specific. <laughs> I think, but I mean, I know Fish does like a fast and slow llama. I don't know a whole lot about Fish. I've been listening to them. It's like 2015, maybe. Um, yeah, so I, I don't know. I think it's like a goose thing. It feels like to me, yeah. they just do so many different crazy versions that, um, yeah, it's just hard to, everyone has a, a their different favorite because it could be the reggae, it could be the slow, it could be the fast. So. Yeah, I think Fish definitely doesn't have as many different versions of their different songs. Um, they have a few that they mix up a bit, but mostly the, you know, the unique pieces are in the the jam itself, not necessarily in the composition of the song. So you're not going to hear Possum very different um, at you know, at its core. It's going to still be the same song. But I, and I do think that that is a unique thing about Goose. I remember like being super confused. I went to a show and like they played So Ready and I was like, is this the same song? Like, I, I mm -hmm. honestly, I didn't know. It was a very early of me, like even going to shows and like listening to Goose. And so since then, yeah, as, as Hannah mentioned in this episode, we're talking about Indian River. And it's, this is a great example of a song that has so many different versions. And I, mm -hmm. I always want to ask them, like, how do they decide which one they want to play? Is it just whatever, you know, whatever they feel like? Or how does that happen? Uh, in fact, I'm going to submit that to RJ for a question. Oh, wow. Um, and see if he'll <laughs> ask that, because that's a good question to ask. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, but I, I do think it is unique to Goose. And I think it does kind of draw a specific type of person into liking Goose. People ask me all the time, my friends like, why do you see them so much? I'm like, because each time I hear a song, it's never the same. It literally, and it's not just, just the jam part. I mean, it really is literally never the same. It's not just the jam, the actual music, how they compose it, which, you know, tempo they're using. Um, I, I know the other day somebody was complaining about like, three songs and Jeff like replied to them with the beats per minute for each of the songs. Like actually they're, they're very close. They're like three, three beats off from one another. So they actually are in the same family. And it was so, such an eye opener for me of just like, he was, he thinks about these songs and beats per minute. It like blew my mind <laughs> and, yeah. wow. and like him responding so directly to somebody like challenging if songs go well together or appropriate to be together. And he was like, well, actually, you know, <laughs> kind of so, much thought into it. so much thought, you know, wow. and What's I, it? I do think it's unique to Goose there, though. There's an array below set that came out recently. It might've been the Colorado, one of the Colorado shows, but where um, I forget who, but one of the guys is like, um, who's going to da 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 show tomorrow. We're going to play the same set. And like, <laughs> just like say it like that. And it's just like, it's just, it, it's so tongue in cheek. And I just love that they also like joke around about it with the audience. You know what I mean? I, it just makes it so fun. Like, mm -hmm. It does. And it's like, you know, Sean, when you were talking about the Taboos tour, it reminded me of that. I mean, we saw, I went to five of the eight shows and, um, you know, I, I think Goose played one double and the only double they played was one that Trey had played and then one they played by themselves. And I think Tab repeated like the second the second show they repeated because they're a right. different type of band, right? They're, yeah. uh, you know, a standard band that 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 has like very defined ways in which they play their songs. And I mean, they have sheet music in front of them, for goodness sake. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, very, it's very different, but it was such an interesting experience to have those two yeah. kind of different approaches to live music combined together in one show is so interesting. And then it made those encores super special because... <laughs> You had those two things colliding with one another with this hugely improvisational, you know, approach to making music and then this more, you know, I would say traditional approach to live music. And it was just an, I just thought it was really interesting, very different than if Fish and, and you know, Goose had gone on tour. It just Tab with Goose, I think, was just a really unique pairing and really special to see um, how different musicians approach their you know, their, their way of working, like watching Des and, you know, and Trevor, you know, play bass together. Like that was really interesting to watch. Like, yeah. like you know, how, how is that going to work? And, you know, all of that was just really interesting and really cool to see. So yeah, I do think it's, it's unique and um, something special about this particular community. Uh, I'll leave the last question with you, um, Alexia, as far as guests. Um, so is there anything else that you would like to share about the LGBTQ plus goose fan experience and anything also I'm going to add on to this and anything also that you feel that we as a community can work on and can 
can help share to others and take this because things that we learn in the community are things that we inevitably take home. That's how wonderful. And we all know that that's how wonderful that our community is, is I now get to the point to where certain people I don't even want to be around when they're so negative at home. Like I come home from shows and Leslie, like you were saying how uh, on one show, how Drew said that he goes to shows and like, it's like being at the altar, like, you know, that that is his place that that is. And a lot of us feel that way. Like that is our church session. And I'm sorry for those who are offended by that, who are listening because we, you know, it's, it's a whole, it doesn't, that's our experience and that's what we enjoy. And that's the things that we get out of it. And I get the same thing when I leave a goose show, I feel, you know, like I've been so enlightened and I'm taking things home. And so it would be so wonderful to know, you know, what, what we could learn there to do better and how we could support better and what that we could take home with us and share with those around us and, you know, it help enlighten those. So, um, do you feel that there is anything else that you would like to share and what that we could possibly do better as a community and share with those to others as we leave? Um, I think even including myself and like not even the goose community, just like as a whole when introducing ourselves, um, saying like our pronouns, um, cause I know like I felt super comfortable with you, you know, you guys. So I see even then you guys, you people, <laughs> um, so I was able to say, hi, I'm Sean, he, him, but I, you know, at work, you know, if I'm meeting somebody new or something, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to do that. So if other people, I guess, if we all try to do it and normalize it, be a lot easier. And um, I guess my other point would be, um, yeah, just trying not to use uh, gender, gender neutral or specific, gender specific. Like I, I just need to be mm -hmm. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, this, it makes some of the non-binary people not just feel seen. And um, just one more thing. I never realized that like in introducing myself at shows would help my anxiety. Like um, Leslie was saying, and that that's such a good idea because uh, I think we were right behind Drew and Leslie and Alexius and Jason at Reading, and we, I don't. I just never introduced myself. I'm just like we're in my shy. bubble, yeah. very shy, very anxious. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna start using those tips. And thank you for that. Yeah. Also, if I'm up front and you introduce yourself, I switch out. So you could have been on the rail, like so <laughs> yeah. just as an incentive to yeah, people I would have gotten to, 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 to me, for, me personally, anyways. And I actually learned that from Alexia. So uh, the first time I was at the front of a show, she was like, "Oh, let's switch for a little bit after we, you know, uh -huh. got to meet each other." So um, yeah, there, there's a perk to to that as well. I think. Yeah. Did I not introduce y'all? I, I feel terrible that I did. Okay, okay. No, you did. You I, did. You did. Okay. I was just like, oh, oh. I thought, yeah. <laughs> but that's definitely. I feel the same way that Leslie does, and I, I feel that that can help everyone's anxiety. And you know, is always in, introduce yourself to those that are around you. It helps. For me, it helps my show experience. And then if someone comes inside the bubble of people right. that I know, you know, like ten people around me, I literally start looking, and I'm like. Where, you know, they're not a part of my crew that we come in with, you know, it could just be right. me and Jason going in. It just could be the two of us. But I literally am like, wait a minute, where did this person go? And asking people, you know, and so I think that's an, another way that I've gotten very close with people. And that's the way that I've met y'all and, yeah. and different people is just, you know, it's just meeting the people around around you and making sure that you know about people, what's going on. I think with my epilepsy, that's a big, you know, I want to make sure that, hey, I'm okay, you know, if this happens and I have to take medicine at this time. So, you know, and everyone kind of starts to set their clocks and, you know, knows because it's an important thing for people to know. So I think that's an awesome thing and something that we can all, you know, make sure that we, that, that we practice on is, you know, is making sure that we say our, um, making sure that we say, hey, I'm um, Alexius, uh, she, her. And mm -hmm. is that how, you know, how you would say it? Because that, yeah. that, I think that's another thing. Like if people are just like, I don't know how to say this. How do I, how do I properly say it? Like y'all have heard me say like how, like because yeah. I don't want to, 
I love everyone and I don't want to offend anyone. It's nothing about like, oh, I don't, you know, I don't think this is right. Da, da, da. It's just like, I don't want to offend anyone. So you tell me the way that we're supposed to, you know, the way that you feel comfortable and the way, and then I am totally down because I don't want to, I don't want to hurt anyone. And so this is a good thing to, good thing to start doing with others. And I think our community can definitely do that. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks y'all for coming on the show. Thanks for saying yes and um, being so open with us. I can't wait to be at a show together again. I'm super uh, excited specifically for our, our time in Asbury Park. It's going to be yeah. awesome. I'm really excited can't about wait. it and can't wait. Um, do you? Do, is there any way you, you want folks to follow you or, or are you on socials or if, if not, that's fine too. I just always like to make the option available for folks when they come on the show. Yeah, you can follow me on Facebook, Sean Bates, if you want to. I mean, I'm one of those people that if I see you and I think you're cool, then I'm going to add you and hopefully we share this. Hey, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. not, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Sarah Elizabeth. And, yep. Awesome. Thanks, y'all. Any any last words that you want to share with everyone before you uh, get back to your regularly scheduled programming? <laughs> well, no, just thank you for having yeah, us, you guys. Sarah. You're awesome people are awesome. I, <laughs> I love y'all so much and I cannot wait to see y'all oh. soon and I will definitely be seeing y'all in SPAC if I don't come and visit y'all before because y'all have nieces that y'all need to, <laughs> to, to uh, meet and Aura is going to be so sassy. I'm super excited because they're going to be at SPAC and we're going to, you know, we're all going to be there. Uh, well, which ones of us are going to be? I think, I know Leslie's going to be there. I think there. we're all going to be at SPAC. I'm are we all going to be at SPAC? Oh, wow. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so, we're, we're taking over the lawn. It's back. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's <We> awesome. <laughs> so, Ara, my youngest, which has not been, people have seen pictures of her here and there, but she has not made her debut on the Goose scene yet. And so, okay. so she's making her debut at SPAC because her daddy um, his first concert was at SPAC with Janet Jackson. So he oh, wow. just was like, he's like, oh, what a better first concert. SPAC, the same place her daddy went to. And uh, Goose, he's like, couldn't ask for better. And I was like, yeah. so true. And he's from Saratoga Springs. So he's excited to take the girls up there, showing where he was, you know, born and raised and stuff. And then first concert, some similarities and stuff. So I'm so excited to have all of us there and take over the lawn. Awesome. This is going to be exciting. Somebody tell Ben to give her a shout out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Um, she, she might go up there on stage. She's a little feisty. <laughs> She'd probably be like, give me that microphone. I'll sing a song. <laughs> I don't you know got to watch from. those lipos for sure. You got to keep an eye on them. <laughs> eye on them. All right. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Sean, so much. Yep. We'll talk to you really soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank y'all. Thanks. Western Sun Foundation has launched their second campaign in support of an organization local to the upcoming Capitol Theater run. 914 Cares, only seven miles from the venue, works to ensure their neighbors in need are cared for by collaborating, supporting, and providing resources, educating the community about poverty, and encouraging actionable generosity. WSF will be providing charitable support through donations made directly to Western Sun Foundation and launching an online auction to benefit 914 Cares on Tuesday, February 28th. Head over to Western Sun Foundation socials, check out their website, westernsunfoundation.org, or if you're going to the Capron, stop by their table for more information on how you can support this great organization and campaign. Thanks again to Sean and Sarah for joining us. We are so grateful for them being with us today and sharing their experiences and stories with us. And we also want to hear from you. As you know, we have a voicemail line set up for all the Goose Chicks and fans to share their experiences with Goose and the Jam Band scene. You can give us a call at 704 704- 275-3128 to leave us a message. Might get played on the show. This week, we're asking folks to call in and tell us what you're looking forward to most in the 2023 tour year. Again, that number is 704-275-3128. Good 
Huge Chicks podcast is produced by Leslie Mack with support from sound engineer Matt Dwyer, co-host Alexia Sleepo, and contributors Chelsea Long, that's me, and Hannah Liebrich. Special thanks to our sponsor, Ben & Jerry's, for their support, especially Jay Curley, Jay Tandon, and their entire team. We are a proud member of the Osiris Media family. You can check us out on socials at Goose Chicks Pod and on our website, goosechickspod.com. As always, we encourage our listeners to support the Western Sun Foundation. Visit westernsunfoundation.org or for more detailed information, goosecommunity.com. Remember to subscribe and leave us a review on your favorite podcast app. Also, tell a friend about the show. It really helps us out. Don't forget to call our number and leave us a message at 704-275-3128. Until next time, be kind to each other out there. Bye, y'all. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Osiris.